Hello learners, I am Manjeet Sembi and in our previous class we have learned the difference between curricular and co-curricular activities, things to be considered while planning the co-curricular activities, difference between syllabus and scheme, monthly and yearly scheme of lessons, unit and characteristics of a unit. Let us continue with the lesson on planning learning activities and we shall continue with preparation of a unit plan. Now as mentioned earlier, every syllabus has got topics and subtopics that can be arranged around a theme or a central principle and we call this as a unit. So what do we do in order to prepare a unit plan for the entire year? We first form proper units and subunits even if they are not prescribed in the syllabus. Depending on what central theme they are around. Later, we formulate learning objectives pertaining to these units. In every subject we have learning objectives like acquiring knowledge, understanding, application, appreciation and so on. So every unit should be able to help us achieve these kind of learning objectives. We then select methods and techniques that have to be used to transact these units in the class. And besides, we also need to find the methods of assessment. What kind of testing methods are we going to use at the end of the session to evaluate how much the students have understood what has been taught in the class? So a unit plan would look like this. Say for example in the subject of science in class 7 we have a unit on diseases. So in our first column major idea or concept we have the unit diseases. Under the subunits, ideas or sub ideas, we have types of diseases. And under the types of diseases, we can take four types communicable and non communicable diseases, diseases which are transmitted through vectors, and infectious diseases. So, subunit wise, the number of periods required is what we need to note down. We would take two periods for each kind of diseases. Now in our total number of periods that are required for the unit, we shall have eight periods altogether. Under the column of course contents to be covered, we would have the name of the disease, its symptoms, its causes and the measures that have to be taken to treat the disease. The methods and strategies that have to be used in the class. The teacher would make use of a simulated hospital scene and she could show images or a video to depict the symptoms of the different diseases. In addition, she can have cooperative learning strategies where the students sit in groups and write down the ways to treat and the preventive measures for these diseases. So under the TLMs to be used, we can say ICT integrated and cooperative learning methods used. Under the column of evaluation devices to be adopted, the teacher may make use of written tests like multiple choice tests, brief answers, long answers, whatever kind of tests she wishes to use would be noted down here. So this becomes a complete plan of action to transact one unit and similarly there may be different units in a particular subject, in a particular class and each unit may extend over a week, perhaps two weeks or a month or as the course content load would require it. Let us now proceed to a lesson plan. 
The teacher has a syllabus and she has divided the syllabus into a unit plan. But she has to go in the class daily and teach lessons in order to come closer to achieving the objectives as well as covering the syllabus. So usually a lesson would be transacted in the classroom in one period of 35 to 40 minutes duration. A teacher needs to plan these 35 to 40 minutes of her teaching in such a manner that the teaching is considered effective and the students learn it effectively and meaningfully. So for a teacher to make her teaching effective, she needs to carefully plan and prepare for each lesson. So in order to prepare effectively to transact the syllabus in the class, a teacher constitutes a daily lesson plan and a lesson plan would contain activities which are to be done before the teaching learning, activities that are to be conducted during the teaching learning process, teaching learning process. The teacher also needs to enlist the appropriate supporting materials she would be making use of in the class. For instance, teaching aids like globes, maps, models, images, videos, audios and so on and of course what methods and techniques she would be using for every class. Activities, dramas, storytelling, simulations and so on and so forth. Every lesson plan that a teacher uses needs to have three distinct phases. Activities which are conducted before the teaching learning, activities during the teaching learning and activities after the teaching learning. Let us see this in more detail. But before that, let us look at the characteristics of a lesson plan. The first characteristic of a lesson plan is that it should be objective based. As said earlier, every subject depending on the nature of its content will have certain very clear-cut objectives like acquiring of knowledge, a better understanding, application, creation, evaluation and so on. So every lesson, the content that has been decided to, to be taught in the 30 to 40 minutes should be able to translate into some kind of objectives in that subject. A lesson plan has to be comprehensive. The content taken in a lesson should be simple, brief and should be able to direct the efforts of a teacher to achieve those objectives that she has planned. A lesson plan should be flexible. The content which a teacher uses from the textbooks can sometimes be outdated. There can be many new recent inventions and happenings in that field or subject which a teacher finds relevant while she teaches a topic and she wishes to incorporate in the lesson plan. So the lesson plan should be flexible helping the teacher to incorporate these, this new knowledge. Every lesson plan should be practical and implementable. One, a teacher should be able to actually conduct the lesson and help the students realize the planned out objectives in the 30 to 40 minutes. What does a lesson plan contain? The lesson plan contains preparatory activities prior to teaching learning, activities which are undertaken during the teaching learning and activities which are performed after the teaching learning. Let us look at the preparatory activities. In the preparatory activities, while the teacher sits down with a paper and pencil as she plans out her lesson, the first thing she has to specify learning outcomes. That is, when I teach this content in the class, what is it that at the end the students would be able to do? What knowledge, what understanding, what skills would be developed through this content? So she specifies the learning outcomes. Provision of teaching learning activities or strategy. 
what kind of strategies am I going to use to make my teaching interesting and effective? So, are they going to be cooperative teaching strategies like think, pair, share or dramatization or is it going to be a project that they are going to work on and so on and so forth. She would also decide about the teaching learning methodology and is there a special provision for teaching learning for a particular topic? Do I require the assistance of another teacher, a colleague? Do I need to do co-teaching? Do I need the help of the monitors in the class? Do I need to take my students on a field visit? Do I need to involve the community? So, in that case, the teacher would also note down any special provisions required for her in the lesson plan at the preparatory stage. And of course, in the end, she would decide how much time each activity in the class would take in a period of 30 to 40 minutes and sequence them accordingly. Decide the order in which they would be conducted in the class. So, this is what the teacher would do at the preparatory stage of her lesson. Now, what would be the activities that the teacher would conduct during the teaching learning? There would be introduction, presentation and assessment. The very first phase of a lesson is introducing the topic to the students and this the teacher can do by thinking of various interesting ways of introducing a topic. It can be through an activity, through a story, through showing them a movie, reading out a newspaper article or having discussions among them in order to arouse their interest and set the tone for the class. And this could take about 5 to 7 minutes of a 40 minutes lesson. After a lesson has been effectively introduced and the title having been mentioned would come the next stage and that is presentation. The presentation is the actual teaching of the concept and in this the teacher would once again carry out the strategies or activities that she has decided. Is it just illustrating with the help of a lot of examples? Is, is it questioning and discussing? Is it narrating a story? Is it carrying out a debate in the class? Is it carrying out some activities in pairs or groups? Or is it just simple teaching through questioning? This would be done in the next phase of the class and the last phase that is assessment would be carried out in the last 5 minutes of the 40 minute presentation. At this stage the teacher would ask the students objective type of questions just to assess whether what she has taught in the class has been understood by the students or whether she has been able to achieve the objectives that she had slated out at the beginning of the lesson. The post-teaching learning activities would include reviewing the classroom activities. This is like a reflective exercise where now the teacher would reflect over her class. She would try to assess whether the lesson has been able to realize the set out learning objectives whether the lesson was interesting for the students, whether they were able to absorb what was taught, whether she needs to make any kind of changes in the strategy or in the method employed. And of course, giving home assignments to the students for strengthening and enriching their learning. And these could be in the form of some kind of written or project activities. Thus, we have seen that a teacher needs to plan her lessons in order to provide meaningful and rich learning experiences to the students. In order to make best use of the little time that she gets daily on a daily basis in the class. And on the other hand, if a teacher has to plan her lessons in such a detailed manner every day, it can be a very challenging task. So, a teacher can instead maintain a lesson diary 
or a lesson note. So what is this lesson diary or lesson note? In a lesson note, the main components of a detailed lesson plan are recorded in brief, as brief as possible, as it is not possible for the teachers always to prepare a detailed lesson plan. So, a lesson diary or a lesson note is a brief write-up that a teacher plans to teach a lesson in one period in any class. Hence, a lesson note is essentially a personal note prepared for organizing your classroom activities. A detailed lesson plan prepared by a teacher can be used by the other teachers. But a lesson note which is prepared by a teacher can be used by him or her only. A lesson note is a one-page note with the following information. It has the date, class, the period, the subject and the topic. The specific learning outcomes, the required teaching learning methodologies, specific learning activities, main questions facilitating teaching and assessment and a tentative time required for each major activity. This is how the format of a lesson note would be. In its columns, we have a brief outline of the contents presented and discussed, completed or not, reasons for non-completion and any new ideas that emerged in the class. Many a times we have very spontaneous but very fruitful discussions in the class which result in very meaningful insights and ideas that emerge. A teacher can also make note of those. And this is like a reflective, it can also act like a reflective note where the teacher notes down what were the reasons that she has not been able to complete a particular lesson in the class. So learners, in this class of ours, we have learned what is a unit plan, we've learned how to prepare a lesson plan, what are the characteristics of a lesson plan, what are the components of a lesson plan, the three phases of the lesson plan, the, the pre, the actual phase of lesson, of the lesson and the post and again in each phase we have seen a detailed discussion of this. Learners, I hope with this discussion you are clear about planning different learning activities and would feel more competent to plan out your units and lesson plans. Thank you very much.